Good morning. Good morning. I am David Roberts. Hey, the uh, <laughs> pastor of what used to be Emmanuel Baptist Church. And uh, now I'm trying to figure out what I am. So, no, but I'm glad to be here to preach the Word of God this morning. Um, just a, a, a few things before uh, I get into the message this morning. First of all, I find it's very interesting that somehow I end up preaching for the first time in over three months on the first day that we are Damascus Church. <laughs> That's sort of interesting, the way that that played out. Um, you know, God's smarter than I am, smarter than we are, so he knows what he's doing. Um, another thing that I find very interesting was that, uh, I don't know how many of you have ever really looked at or read any of the history of this church that's on the wall down the hallway here. But between the Sunday school classroom and the office, there is a letter or a history that's printed, posted on the wall there. And let me just read you what it says. It says, on May 24th, 1954, 70 years ago, the Baptist Temple at 94 Swede Road voted to withdraw from the World Baptist Fellowship and affiliate with the Southern Baptist Convention of Michigan as a church. Reverend Robert Fox was called as the pastor and preached his first sermon with 36 members present. The Baptist Temple was accepted into the Southern Baptist Convention on July 5th, 1954. We're two days past the 70th anniversary of that happening. It's just interesting, I think, how history is playing out uh, right here with us. And as some of you may have heard it said, that history is his story. And God's all over history. Things, I mean, Rick just sang the Battle of the Republic. When you think about the Civil War, you think about the American Revolution, you think about all the wars that our country has been involved with. Just, and, and his, just history altogether, just the hand of God at work. It's amazing. Speaking of history, um, back in 2001, September 11, 2001, y'all probably know the significance of that date. Flight 93, United Airlines Flight 93, left Newark Airport in New Jersey. And uh, once they reached cruising altitude, uh, Muslim terrorists took over the plane with the intention of directing that plane to crash into either the White House or the U.S. Capitol. No one's sure yet because it never reached those destinations, thankfully. And the reason that it did not reach those destinations is because somewhere over Pennsylvania, some people, some passengers on that airplane were flying, and as they I forget exactly how it all played out, but some of the people were using air phones. You remember airplanes had phones in the back of the seats and you could make phone calls? Well, they were hearing about these other planes that had been crashing into the World Trade Center, and the Pentagon, and places like that. And so as word began to spread in the cabin, some of the guys on the plane decided We've got to do something. And they realized something was up on their aircraft. And so they decided to do something. And once they had hatched the plan, a man named Todd Beamer stood up and told the other men, 
let's roll. And so they began to work their way toward the cockpit to wrestle it out of the hands of the terrorists. And this plane ended up crashing somewhere over Pennsylvania. And today as we look in God's word, I think Joshua is telling the children of Israel, let's roll. And I want you to look at that with me today in Joshua chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In this passage of Scripture, in this passage, basically a new season has come for the children of Israel. And Joshua is telling them, look, a new season has come. A new chapter is being written. Moses got us this far. Now it's our turn. It's our time. Let's roll. That's what he's saying. So let's look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And if you're following along in your Bible or your mobile Bible app, whatever it might be, right after... Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is the sixth book right after that. It's, Deuteron it's uh, Joshua right after Deuteronomy. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So as we look at this passage together this morning, in verses 1 through 6, Joshua is telling the people that he is now the leader of. He's telling them, don't look back. Let's build on the past and let's move forward into the promise that God has given to us. In fact, we're told in verse 1, that the Lord spoke to Joshua. The Lord is speaking here. God himself is making his will known. He's speaking to Joshua. And he tells him very clearly in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Notice who Moses was in God's eyes. He was God's servant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, what am I going to do? Is that what God said? No. God already knows what he's going to do. He didn't say that. He said, no. He said, get up. Go over the Jordan to you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Notice that they have to get up. They have to go. They have to, even though God's giving it to them, they have to go. They have to get it. 
At, at Christmas, when you receive a gift, you have to, to get hold of it, right? And then rip the paper and bow and all that off of that thing and see what's in there. You have to take it for yourself. Someone gave it, but you have to receive it. You don't just get it. God gives it to you, but you have to apprehend it. So he did not simply give this land just to Joshua either. He said, no, I'm giving it to them, to the children of Israel. And then look what he says in verse 3. Every place that you put your feet, I have given you. God is doing a lot of work here. We just got to go in and do our part. And he says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given it to you. Anywhere you are, and listen, Christian, sitting here today, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, anywhere you are, God has a kingdom outpost. You are his ambassador where you are. He tells us that in the New Testament, that you are ambassadors for Christ. You are his representative. You're bringing light and hope and purpose and peace because you are a child of God. You are, you are a child of the Prince of Peace. So wherever you go, the Lord is with you. You represent the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the beachhead preparing the way for a kingdom invasion. <clears throat> you start out covertly, secret, unseen, until like a mustard seed, the plant sprouts and grows until it becomes a bush so that the birds of the air can even rest in it. So what starts covertly becomes over. What starts small grows bigger. And look, look in fact in verse 4 at how big Israel will get. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites into the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. That's a lot of land. I don't know if you've ever looked at it on a map. Maybe in the back of your Bible that might show a map of this. <clears throat> but that's a lot of land. And it shall be your territory. In fact, in verse 5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Listen, God is going to take care of anyone or anything that tries to keep this from happening. God has already told us, the New Testament church, that the gates of hell, hell will not prevail against the church as it accomplishes its mission. We need to be strong and of good courage, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, delighting in Him, trusting in Him, looking to Him and obeying Him. Let's do what He says and let's let Him fight for us and take care of the details. He said, just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will be with you. Now, do you believe that, church? Do you believe that when Jesus said, Go and make disciples, and I will be with you always. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. I hope you do. Will God keep his word? Yes. yes, absolutely every single word of it. He will be with us. In fact, it's interesting that the word Emmanuel <laughs> means that. God with us. Look at verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. 
For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So he will be with us. And knowing that he is with us should cause us to be strong and of good courage. You see, God is a promise-keeping God. He swore to the patriarchs that he would give them this land to divide up among themselves. And God is about to make good on that as we read further into Joshua. But, but here's the thing. Here's the rub. And this is often where we bump right up to this and then we lose faith and miss out on what God wants to give us. The rub is that God has promised he'll be with us. God has promised he'll give us the land. And so we see God's sovereignty, God ruling, God telling you exactly what he's going to do. Amen? Amen? Now, that is what God said. You're, I'm going to be with you, and I'm giving you the land. So that's one side of the rub. Here's the other side of it. Look at verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So the other part of the rub is that we have to be strong. We have to be courageous. Who's God talking to here? He's talking to his people. He's talking to Israel specifically here in that day. But when we're thinking about it in New Testament terms of him calling us to go and make disciples, he said, I'll be with you always. So we need to be very strong and very courageous. In fact, they have a role in it. They have a responsibility. First, to be strong and be courageous. Secondly, to do everything the law of Moses commands. In other words, and don't make it up as you go either. Don't turn to the left or to the right. And he says, if you do what I'm telling you, and this is the Lord telling him this, he says, if you do what I'm telling you to do, the way I'm telling you to do it, you will prosper wherever you go. Isn't that great? That's what God with us, God giving it to us, but our part is to take it and to trust and to believe and to go. So the rub then here is between God's sovereignty and our responsibility. God will keep his word. Now we don't have to worry about that. The question is, will we keep our end of the bargain? Will we be faithful to do all that the Lord has said? In fact, Hebrews 13, 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, my understanding and my reading of the Bible is that God always rewards faith and obedience. He always does. And verse 8 is a commentary, an elaboration, if you will, on what he just said in verse 7. Look at verse 8 there. It says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So this book of the law. Now let's just, for simplicity's sake, for us, let's just say that means the Bible. All right? Meditate in it. Feed yourself on it. Take it in. It's the fuel you need to live on and to serve with. We should be people in the Word of God. We should be people of the Word of God. We should be people who share the Word of God, who meditate on it day and night. We, we chew on it like cud, like a cow would chew and digest and I don't know how much you know about cows, but apparently they have more than one stump. Yeah. And it just stays with them for a while. 
How often are we supposed to do this? He says day and night. All throughout your waking hours. Now, most of us are awake during the day and part of us at night. At least, of course, right now up here it stays light so long. I think it's daylight almost all the time where I'm awake. But I do like summers up here. It's pretty. But he says if you meditate in the word day and night and do what it says, you will be prosperous and successful. Now, who doesn't want that? I do. I, I'm good. I, I'll take it. What church would not want that? Congregationally or missionally? You see, living as Christians is not some big mystery that we need to figure out. The Bible makes it very clear. What makes it hard is whether we are going to trust God or not. We make it hard, not God. Christians have God's Holy Spirit living within us to empower, enable, and equip us to do all that He's commanded us. So we don't have an excuse. We might think we do, but we don't. This is not mission impossible that we're talking about. With God, all things are possible, the Bible says. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I would submit to you this morning that the ball is in our court. And then finally, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. I think he has. He's done it two or three times already before we get to this verse. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So he not only says be strong and courageous, but he adds something new. He says, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. And again, why? How can we be strong and courageous? Why should we not be afraid or dismayed? Why? Because the Lord is with you wherever you go. Amen. So church, this morning, I would like to say and challenge you, let's roll. Amen. Let's get in the Word. Let's share the Word. Let's live the Word. Let's do the Word. And let's see what God will do. Amen. He has put this church here in this community. He has given, I, I'm claiming this community for Christ. So let's begin reclaiming souls for the kingdom. Let's share the gospel so people can find life, hope, and purpose in Jesus Christ. So let's roll. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord God, we just give you thanks for these verses of encouragement. We thank you for just the excitement, the anticipation, and the, the just knowing that you're behind it. You're there with us. You're empowering us to do it. And the victory is there. We just need to go out. We need to claim it. We need to be faithful. We need to do it. So Lord, we, we thank you for these encouraging words and help us to really come together as one church and let's roll out together and take this community for Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as we sing this last song together, if God has spoken to you today and you would like to come to the front and pray or if you'd like to step out in faith and let me know of your interest in following Jesus in baptism, church membership, or if you just want prayer, you come as we sing together. Let's stand together, brother.